Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie from Living the Dream Permaculture and I thought that today I'd do another gardening with me video because I'm feeling better and um, there's lots to do and it's the holidays so I'm taking a break from the other style of videos just for a few weeks um, so I can catch up on a few things here in the garden. So why don't you come along with me and see what needs to be done today. I'm back in this garden today because this is the one that is most out of control. <laughs> it is filling up, which is lovely. I love this time of year when it's looking lush and gorgeous. But there's things out of place like this bucket that got blown away in the wind. I've got some pots and seedlings that are dying in their trays. Um, there's a few weeds, not as many in the garden beds as there are in the pathways. <laughs> um, but what is really pressing are these tomatoes. So I'm going to get on these. And you can see the difference that it's going to make. I've still got some broad beans over there. They need to come out. Um, harvest what I can, although I'm getting new shoots. These are all new shoots because I've already cut these back. Um, because it's a cooler summer, maybe we'd get more fruit. I don't know, but I'll probably just keep cutting them back and plant some proper beans here. But yes, this area needs a big, big cleanup. This is my, let's try and get in here. This is my perpetual spinach. And you can see how many seeds are on here. Thousands, literally thousands of seeds. Um, but that takes, that's taking up a great big lot of space so um, I don't know if I'll trim some of it back because I don't need 3,000 perpetual spinach plants it's probably a little bit of overkill even though I like overkill there are some seeds here that are dry so they're ready to come off and go into storage that's probably enough let's be honest so I might harvest those and then pull out the rest because it's ugly, it's taking up a whole lot of space, and it's completely unnecessary. So I've got a couple of seeds saved. That's a substantial amount of seeds. <laughs> That's even too many seeds. Um, this is going out now and into my compost bins. These are just an open bay compost bin. I am, um, I don't turn them. I don't worry about carbon nitrogen ratio. I just shove everything in there, weeds, spent garden material, goes in there, and then I get beautiful rotted down humus at the end of the season, and I just put it on the beds that need it most. So I think this bed's going to get a bit of a renovation um, next spring, and so is this bed, um, because it could do with a bit more organic matter. Now I'm going to save some seeds from this um, perennial uh, rocket. It is starting to come back to life after it went to seed. Um, but I want to clean it up a bit so I'm going to take off these seed pods. And in there is a bunch of seeds. Let's see if I can open it up one handed. There are the seeds. So I'll save some of those. So I might grow some somewhere else and I might give some away too. So let's do that now. The perennial rocket is saved as well. There's only a few seeds that I've saved and there's a heap more on the plants, but there's only so many plants you need of that. So now this is all going to go get chopped back. Paul just spotted the first tomatoes of the season. It's pretty good. These are yellow tomatoes. It just fell off in my hand. This one's got a big bug hole in it and this one did too so I, I um, chucked it off. That one can go over the fence otherwise I'll get more tomatoes in my <laughs> veggie patch but yep yeah, first couple of tomatoes. It looks so different already. I find that steaks in the garden just changes it. Makes it feel so much fuller and this is where that spinach was and the rocket's all trimmed up and you can see it over there in the compost bin.
I'm just using this woolen string. It's actually um, carpet wool um, to tie up my tomatoes because once it's done, I can leave it where it is and it will compost down and not leave a heap of plastic in my garden. The stakes that I use are the old shearing shed floor that were cut out before we arrived here. Unfortunately, um, they were breeding rabbits in the big shed, big shearing shed, and they had cut out holes to put the cages so all the poop fell down to the floor, which worked for them, um, but we were left with 50 great big holes in the floor. Um, but we've recycled those um, um, slats, I guess you call it, slats of hardwood timber, um, and we use them in the garden as stakes. My permaculture designer teacher said that um, if your soil is really bioactive that your stakes will rot no matter how good a quality hardwood you get. Um, we haven't found this yet but our soil probably isn't as bioactive as his is so for now this works. In the future we might use um, steel pickets and then run a wire and then tie them up on that but for now this is how we do it because we're using what we have. If I see any damaged tomatoes, I just pull them off. There's no point the plant putting its energy into that if I'm not going to use it um, because it's too damaged. I'm not sure if I'll be pruning off the laterals at this stage. Probably not because I'm lazy. I'm also saving some broad bean seeds from some of the last beans. I'm finding the ones that are dried on the bush. And then taking the seed out. There's still some that are green that I could pick and harvest to eat. Might do that later. But at the moment it's lunchtime, so we're going to go up and have lunch. So this section is done. Everything's tied up, looking much neater, much easier to access. Nice wide pathway. And the tomatoes can keep growing up. I found quite a few fruit. This one's fallen off. But there's still quite a few on this one. Heaps of flowers coming out, heaps of new growth. It's still very, very early in our tomato season. We're about to get a whole lot of rain again. You can see the tractor up there. Paul's just mowing some of the paddocks. Um, because we've got really long grass and the stock can't keep up with it, but it's drying off. But because we're getting all this rain, um, we've decided to mow it so we can get fresh green grass, which is more nutritious and the stock prefer. So we've got quite a few paddocks that are going to be mowing in the next couple of days, um, except for our hay paddock. We're still waiting for some nice weather to do that. Um, but the paddock should look nicer with the mown grass. See this bed? This is my subtropical area. It's going crazy. I do like it in there. I keep pulling out the spent lilies. Pulled out a few more this morning. So some of the um, other plants in there can grow up. It's looking nice and lush beautiful geese that we've raised as little chicks they need to be moved because they've eaten all the grass here um, they're going to be moved to this section here where all the kaiku grass is because they love eating that and there's some other grass in there too and it will hopefully stop it from seeding into the patch because I don't like weeding. <laughs> I've just grabbed one of my artichoke flowers. I've got quite a few here in the garden and I'm going to search for some seeds. So I'm going to do some digging and I'll show you if I find any. I have so many flowering at the moment. Um, such a beautiful plant. I enjoy eating them, the bees love them, and they're really quite striking. So that's why I grow them in my garden. 
So they are the seeds there at the end of the choke and I think they're a little bit immature. They should be um, a light grey colour once they're fully dried and ready to be sown. And so I'm just going to leave this in the garden. If they grow, they grow. Um, if not, I've got quite a few others that I can save seed from, so it's no huge loss. Um, the great things about artichokes is that they are perennial. You can see that this one got battered by the wind. It's usually really big and bushy. It's got heaps of leaves coming out the side. Um, but the wind killed it will kill the leaves, um, but they re-sprout little pups. And so while they are perennial, the existing bush dies, I guess, and then each year you'll get new pups um, to grow new plants. I thought I'd pop in my hot house and grab a couple of things that need to be planted out. It's severely overgrown in here, so I need to give it a weed because in the next few days, probably when it starts raining, I'll start sowing my brassicas for next autumn. But let's grab a few of these things out. I've got some marigolds there, some basil, uh, that can go out into the garden. So I've got a few trays of seedlings that I need to find space for. Not really sure where, because we're a little bit full. <laughs> but I'm just gonna keep popping stuff in between everything because it needs to get in the ground and we're going to start getting rain not tomorrow but the next day so be good for it to get a water in and the ground's already um, wet from all the rain we've been having a couple of days ago so still nice and wet in there this isn't the best bird but it's still wet in there I'm going to plant a heap of basil in this gap where the spinach was. So in amongst the tomatoes, companion planting. And very convenient for when I harvest my tomatoes, I can harvest some basil to make a sauce or bruschetta. Looking forward to that. Look at these tomatoes here. How big they are. So good. Some of that spinach has already self-seeded. <laughs> this was underneath the big bush that was here. There was a couple more, but I think they've wilted with the sun today. A couple of the basils are in. I leave them in big clumps like that. That way, if some get eat eaten by snails, it doesn't matter. And they grow into really nice bushes this way. In this bed last year, I really struggled to grow tomatoes. They were stunted. They were only about 20 centimeter tall, 20 centimeters tall and really struggly and I got maybe one or two fruit off each and this year I paid a lot of attention to this bed. I put in a layer of composted horse manure, straw and then some hot compost, um, another layer of straw and the tomatoes are huge now, um, huge difference from last year. It's awesome seeing um, how your hard work pays off um, in beds like this. So I knew that this bed was really poor, put a lot of time and effort into it, and it's thriving now. So that's really fun. I wanna show you some of the soil. I wanna show you how I've improved it um, and what it used to look like before I added all this organic matter. So this is the other side of the veggie patch. Let's have a dig. It is silt in here and because it was cut to make it flat um, all the topsoil what was here there wasn't much or went so you can see it's not lovely um, I've had wood chips on here so it's a little bit darker than what it was before the wood chips but you can see it's not very deep it's very hard in this bed so just over from there in this bed I've laid up all that organic matter and you can see how dark and light it is. It's really, really lovely. So this is why the plants can now grow. And it's really deep too. You see how deep that is. Still a bit of silt. It's always going to be silt. But it's soft and crumbly 
and the plant roots can penetrate it, which is what you want. That's really, I'm really, really happy with that. Lovely. So the basil is in. I've got a few other types of basil, but I'm going to plant them somewhere else. Should be a delicious patch very, very soon. I think I'm going to call it a day. Um, I like to pace myself in the garden. Um, try and do it a little bit each day because if I do too many big days, then I just get tired and then I don't want to get back in the garden. So um, when this is all overgrown with weeds at the end of winter, I like to spend 30 to 60 minutes in the patch a day to get it um, where I want it to be. Um, obviously it's not that overgrown, it's overgrown with food, but um, I'm going to try and maintain it this week and just do a couple of hours each day instead of doing a huge big day because it's hot. Um, I'm still recovering from whatever I had um, last week and I don't want to overdo it. So tomorrow we want to stake the rest of the tomatoes. I want to get the weeds in this um, front pathway dealt with and I want to get the seedlings in before it rains in the next couple of days and then I can just keep coming in here and plodding along so that is the plan for this week I am going to take you with me um, each day as I garden um, and we'll see how well we can get this cleaned up